Cracking the Code viewers, did you know that Cracking the Code is on Instagram? Well, of course we are. It's Instagram.com forward slash Cracking the Code Guitar. And you know why we're there? Because if you put a one minute video on YouTube, everybody gets mad because it's not long enough to do the dishes to. So if we have cool behind the scenes clips or maybe awesome licks and we're giving away free tablature, very well put it here and if you only go here then you won't get all those awesome things so I recommend that you head on over to the Instagrams forward slash cracking the code guitar and sign up to follow or like or subscribe or whatever you do to get that awesome stuff so that you can get that stuff from now on and this has been a public service announcement I now return you <laughs> to your regularly scheduled programming about the awesome Dunlop Jazz 3 <laughs>guitar picks there is indeed a contender for world's most standard smaller sized guitar pick it's this one the Dunlop Jazz 3 despite its jazz moniker the Jazz 3 has been played by everyone from shred pioneer Michelangelo Badio Also, I use Dunlap Jazz 3 picks. Um, they're the hardest picks that I've found, and they're the most pointed. To the genre-defying Eric um, Johnson. I use a, a small pick. It's, kind of, it's like twice as thick as a regular pick. So it has a very uh, positive uh, connection with the string. In fact, I can probably name more non-jazz players who use it than jazzers. So if there's any commonality among famous Jazz 3 users, it isn't so much musical style as simply the general awesomeness of their skills. Leading us to ask what it is about this pick's design that appeals to great lead players, famous or otherwise. Size-wise, compared to the 351, it is indeed smaller. You can see that the 351 has more top to it. But that's not its most salient difference. I would suggest that the real innovations of the Jazz 3 and the reason it's so popular lie more in its shape. You'll notice that the Jazz 3 has slightly wider profile. It's just a little bit more diamond shaped and there's a point to the end of it. It's a more pointy point than the 351 which has a more rounded over kind of point. See that? I'm not doing this very well. There you go. The pointiness of it gives players the feeling of more accuracy, like you can hit notes with greater precision, but I actually don't really think that's what's happening. I think the pointiness of it allows you to get a stronger pluck on the string as it rolls over the top of the string and you get more energy transfer at that point, right at the point there, you get more energy to the string, you get kind of a more plucky feeling. However, when you have a pointy guitar pick, that can sometimes um, make the feeling of string resistance to be a little bit higher and maybe that's why I would hypothesize that's why the 351 solves this problem with the slightly more rounded over point. In the case of the Jazz 3 though, what they did is interesting is they made the pick a little thicker and provided a bevel. And this edge bevel, I don't know if you can see that there, but the edge of the Jazz 3 is slightly flattened out on each side. So you put the pick up against the edge of the string, you play the note, and it tends to flop over just a little bit more easily while still retaining the point of it to, for the energy transfer. And of course the shoulder, this midpoint of the pick here, being a little bit wider and more diamond shaped, gives you more of that taper as you slide over. The tapered shapes of both the 351 and the Jazz 3 introduce edge picking effects on their leading and trailing edges. And as we've seen, there's a relationship between the use of that taper and the resulting frequency response. Where more edge equals a more bass heavy sound. But with the Jazz 3, the nature of this effect is quite different. You can hear a difference, but you have to listen for it, and the difference curve is similarly uneventful. We can see a reduction in the 2K region in the upper mids, and a shallow low mids bump peaking around 200 Hz. Compare this to a Fender 351.
night and day. That 2K upper mids difference is now 10 dB. And just below it in the mids is a wide 5 dB trough from 500 Hertz to one kilohertz. These are big changes in frequency ranges where human hearing is very sensitive. And it explains why the low edge attack sounds unmistakably mids forward by comparison. In fact, the 351 exhibits more mids forward tone tilt even when compared to the Jazz 3's low edge sound. This is surprising considering the Jazz 3's wider shape gives it even more taper and presumably more sliding capability than the 351. So we might expect even more frequency shift when we play it on edge, but that's not what happens. When edge picking is introduced, the string rides the taper down to the point. On the 351, that point is rounded over. It is essentially a continuation of the edge taper from about 32 or 33 degrees for much of its length to dramatically flatter near the point. This flattening increases the twin effects of leading edge force deflection and trailing edge string release for a more bass heavy sound. But on the Jazz 3, the edge curvature is more gradual. The slope changes from a 351 style low 30s in the middle to around mid 50s as we approach the point. This is where the feeling of greater sliding comes from. But because the point is smaller, the slope doesn't really flatten out meaningfully beyond this. Instead, the transition from leading edge to trailing edge is more instantaneous, preserving the energy transfer as the string snaps quickly back. In a sense, the innovation of the Jazz 3 is that its edge bevel and diamond-shaped taper both increase the motion smoothing effect of edge picking, while its pointier point does the seemingly contradictory job of retaining a strong feeling of pick attack. There's also much less point, pun intended, in playing the Jazz 3 flat. At lower degrees of edge picking, it doesn't sound that different, it just feels less smooth. And this illustrates a core observation about pick point geometry. The rounder the point, the more bass heavy the edge picking tone becomes until there's so little grip on the string that you can almost no longer play a note. The roundest point picks are essentially designed for low or zero degree edge picking. Pointy picks are the reverse. They don't produce as wide a variety of sounds across the edge picking spectrum. But when you play them on edge, you get more mechanical smoothness for that basic sound. In a way, these picks were really designed for higher degree edge picking. So if you want more tone control possibilities from flat to edge, a mildly rounded over point like on the 351 is a powerful tool. If you like to play with a higher degree of edge picking for its motion smoothing capabilities, and you don't want as much tone change across the range, then a pointier point like on the Jazz 3 is what you're looking for. When you go to look for smaller sized picks, the influence of, and the ubiquity of the Jazz 3 is such that the term jazz sized pick is now almost generically used, kind of like Jell-O or Band-Aids or Kleenex, generically used to refer to smaller size picks that very frequently have the classic Jazz 3 contour. The wider shoulder, the diamond shape, this round, sort of rounded top to it, the pointier point and the edge bevel with a slightly thicker profile. This is a, actually I forget how thick the Jazz 3 is. It's over a millimeter in thickness. I think it's 1.4 millimeters, don't quote me on that. But it's a thicker size pick with an edge bevel and the point. So it was kind of an ingenious solution to this problem of how do I get this feeling of greater precision and the feeling of greater attack, but while at the same time still having this feeling of smoothness as I play notes. As evidence of the fact that it is in fact the shape or the geometry of the pick that really accounts for its popularity, Dunlop themselves make a larger version of the Jazz 3 that retains its geometry. This one is called the Jazz 3 XL, but in fact it's not really XL, it's more or less the same size, or very similar in size, to the classic 351. But it retains the shape of the Jazz 3, again that rounded top, the slightly wider shoulder, and the pointier point. So you can now get the classic Jazz 3 shape in two different sizes. One that is more of a standard, standardly sized, or let's say Fender 351 size guitar pick, and one that is a the smaller size pick.
there are other smaller size guitar picks. Teardrop shaped picks like D'Andrea's classic 358 design have been around since the beginning, and Dunlop's 205 has been around for a while too. And while both are relatively popular, they did not catch on and become as influential for later generations as the Jazz 3. Nor did the D'Andrea and then later Fender 551, which is actually pretty similar in shape to the Jazz 3, but lacking the edge bevel. And keep in mind the Jazz 3 has a 3 in its name. There is indeed a Jazz 1 with a very rounded over point, a Jazz 2 with a little more point, and finally the secret sauce of bevel, point, and taper that became the classic Jazz 3. If we're going to oversimplify, and I think we are trying to oversimplify here, if we're thinking about smaller picks and the dominance of particular styles, I would suggest that it's okay to oversimplify small picks for the time being, as being more or less represented by what is now the jazz style of smaller picks. Cracking the code viewers, you want to get better at picking technique and we'd like to help. You just watched an awesome new chapter of the Pick Slanting Primer, which now includes two hours of new material on pick design and function, or you might say, how picks work. This is actually a really interesting and complicated topic, and we learned a ton just by filming this stuff and putting it into the product. In addition, the Pick Slanting Primer includes everything you need to know about pick grip, picking motion, string switching mechanics like pick slanting, and how to take all this stuff and organize your lines on the fretboard to give your picking hand the easiest possible time of it. How do you get access to all this amazing stuff? Well, it's so easy. Just head on over to TroyGrady.com. You can grab the pick slanting primer as a download product, or even better, you can check out a subscription and you'll get access to the primer and everything else on the website. How cool is that? It could be one month, two months, no big deal. Get in, get better, get out. As always, it is your support that keeps us going, and we are eternally grateful that you watch our stuff and enjoy it, and most importantly, get better. So if you have a moment, head on over to TroyGrady.com and check us out. And as always, thank you for watching Cracking the Code.